Hi, Grade Nines. Um, this lesson is going to be on just quickly recapping a binomial times a binomial. We were in the middle of practicing it quite a lot. So we're going to do a binomial times a binomial, just brief um, recap. And then what we're going to do is talk about squaring a binomial and then do quite a little bit of work on our own to make sure that we're okay with this. So first of all, let's just remind ourselves, what is a binomial? A binomial is, binomial is something that has two terms. So if you have a look at my very first question that says simplify, this entire question is one term, but inside that bracket there's two terms, and inside that bracket there's two terms. So that's why it's called a binomial times a binomial. Now we've already discussed the fact that a binomial times a binomial simply means what we do is we distribute the x into the bracket like normal grade 8 distribution. So we end up getting x times x, which is x squared, x times negative 1 is negative x. Now the thing that you have to remember every time is that you're multiplying. When you're distributing, you're multiplying. So then it's 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So most people will go wrong because they go 2, take away 1. Don't forget that when you're multiplying, when you're distributing, you're multiplying. Then 9 times out of 10, you'll have middle terms which allow you to simplify. So x squared and 2x take away x is x and minus 2. Now, there's not always like terms, but the questions that we ask tend to have like terms in the middle. So we're just doing distribution twice. So let's just do two more. So next one, I'm distributing the x into the bracket. So it's x times x, which is x squared, x times 4, which is 4x. Then it is minus 3 times x, which is minus 3x. Don't forget you're multiplying. Minus 3 times 4 is minus 12. So everything is about multiplying. Lastly, again, I have like terms in the middle, which is not always the case, but here it is. 4x take away 3x is x, and minus 12. And I actually land up with three terms in my answer. Okay. Next one, I think this is the last one, yep. Next one, distribute your 2x, so 2x times 3x is 6x squared. So remember when you multiply, you multiply the numbers together and then the letters together. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. N oh, let me change color quickly. Then I'm distributing my negative 3, so negative 3 times 3x is negative 9x. And negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. And then once again, my like terms in the middle. So I have 6x squared minus 2, minus 9 is minus 11x, and then plus 3. So these three quick examples was just to remind you how a binomial times a binomial is no different to grade 8 distribution. It's just that each term gets their chance to be distributed into the bracket. And then just don't forget that when you're distributing, you multiply. Now my next um, heading, which we had also started briefly in class, but let's write a proper note on it, is squaring a binomial. Now I know I said this in class, but very, very, very important. You cannot distribute the exponent. You cannot, please write this in like, I don't know, a gold glitter pen. You cannot distribute the exponent. And the only reason you can't do that is one can only distribute an exponent when there's one term in the bracket. So you cannot distribute the exponent because, remember the symbol for because, there is more than one term in the bracket. So if there was one term, it would be fine. There's more than one term in the bracket. So what you cannot do here so therefore, it's not, and most children to matric level make this mistake, it's not that. It's not x squared plus 1, because you can't distribute that exponent. So if we can't do that, what can we do? So what can we do is basically all you need to do is realize the fact that when you're squaring something, it means you're multiplying something by itself. So you can see why this is under the heading of a binomial times a binomial in that that's all it is. It's just that it's written in a different way. So now I distributed my x, so I get x squared 
plus x. And then what you'll notice is, have a look, that next term is also an x, simply because to do the first x, you said x times 1, and now I'm saying 1 times x because the brackets are identical. So my middle terms land up being identical. And then my last one, sorry, was 1 times 1, which is 1. So my middle terms land up being identical, and I add them together, and I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. So it really is just a binomial times a binomial. you just got to stop yourself from distributing that exponent by mistake. So on to the next one. This is 2x minus 1 multiplied by itself. And then I'm just going to do distribution. So 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Remember, numbers and then variables. 2x times a minus 1 is minus 2x. And you'll notice, as mentioned, minus 1 times 2x is another minus 2x. Minus 1 times, remember we're timesing. So it's not minus 2, because it's not minus 1 minus 1. It's minus 1 times minus 1, which is plus 1. And then I've got my identical middle terms in the middle. So this is actually 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So, just a couple more. Next one, resist the temptation to distribute that exponent over 2 because I can't. So I have to write the question out and then a binomial times a binomial. So a times a, a squared, a times 2b. We would prefer to write as 2ab in alphabetical order. Then 2b times a is another 2ab. And 2b times 2b is 4b squared. And then once again, middle terms. So I get a squared plus 4ab plus 4b squared. Don't forget that when you're adding like terms, notice ab adds to ab and it's still ab. Remember when you add like terms, you're never ever changing exponents. Right, second last one x squared plus 2 multiplied by itself. Now this is slightly different in that now I have x squared multiplied by itself. So x squared multiplied by x squared, don't forget your laws of exponents. When you multiply powers the same base, you add those. So it's x squared times 2, which is 2x squared. And then 2 times x squared, which is again 2x squared and then 2 times 2, which is 4. Like terms in the middle. Don't forget that when you add like terms, you do not change the exponents. So this is 4, but still x squared, plus 4. So once you get the hang of a binomial times a binomial, they're all the same thing. Okay, last one I deliberately put in here because it's the fraction one, which we tend to not like. So this is x minus a half. Now don't forget to use the calculator whenever you can if you're scared of fractions. They're just numbers. Don't persecute them. So x times x, x squared, x times negative a half is minus a half x. Now I'm just going to write my note myself a note here. I know I've said this a hundred times in class, but you can write that as one x over two. Well technically it's negative, or you can write it as minus x over two and ignore the one. Or you can write it as negative a half x. As long as the x looks like it's at the top, you cannot write it as negative a half and then make the x kind of floating and no one knows where it is. Okay, moving on. Negative a half times x is exactly the same thing again. And then negative a half times negative a half, and negative times negative a positive. Don't forget that you can use your calculator, but fractions are just top times top, bottom times bottom. So 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4. So that's what I was doing here with the, the, the x times negative a half as well. I just wrote myself a note here. When I'm doing x times negative a half, what I'm doing in my head is I'm saying this is x over 1. So then I say to myself, top times top, so it's negative 1x, bottom times bottom, 2. But you can always cheat on your calculator to help you with the numbers. Okay, last thing, those are like terms. So my x squared 
and my plus a quarter are there. Now if I have minus a half and I minus another a half, I think that's minus one or just minus x. But again, if you don't like fractions, pick up your calculator and get your calculator to do minus a half, minus a half, and it'll tell you it's minus one. And then you just have to remember to put the, the x back in. So don't let the fraction questions destroy you. They're exactly the same logic. So this hasn't been much new to us that we haven't done in class. So what you're going to try on your own now, and then you can watch the second video for this lesson, which is just the memo to both of these things. So exercise 8.15 um, on page 117. Just ignore the instruction. The instruction says do the questions by inspection. Now that means um, to add the like terms in your head as well. Whereas I don't think that we need to be doing that and making mistakes. So ignore that instruction and rather just simplify like we have been doing. And then following that exercise 8.16, just the first column. There's just four questions in that first column. Then you can watch the next video and mark and see where you went wrong. Okay, good luck.